just a normal family, basically. Um, Anne and I were both working. Um, our son was in his last year at university. Um, and we had the same problems as everyone else, you know, financial worries or whatever. You had a mortgage and you had to feed the family and things like that. And then um, Anne, who had never been ill for a day in her life, um, took a heart attack. So she was rushed to the hospital and um, we were virtually told not to expect her to last the night. Because Anne's heart had stopped beating, there was a lack of oxygen to the brain and that Anne's brain had been damaged. Some of the brain cells had died and she would have a number of different problems. Um, that turned out to be both physical and cognitive, um, where she couldn't walk, she'd to learn to walk again, she'd learn to speak again. Um, one of the things she, she has lost is short-term memory. Um, she can remember things happening in her childhood, but not anything that happened five minutes ago. Anne's heart attack happened the 20th of February 1997, and Anne was discharged from hospital in the June of the same year um, to come home. As I say, life goes on. Um, and I didn't realise that, basically. I was in a wee bubble, you know, for those months because my t focus was totally on what was happening to Anne. I then realised when Anne came home from hospital that she needed 24-hour care and I assumed that was my responsibility and that's what I was going to do. So I wasn't going back to work. But you then had to worry about, well, how am I going to pay my mortgage? Because I still have five years of mortgage to pay. All the while coping with someone who needed total care for 24 hours a day. Um, and you just felt as though you didn't have a minute for yourself. You, 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 well, you didn't think of yourself. You couldn't because you were wrapped up in looking after Anne. Um, that was my job. That was my new job, full time. It was about five or six years after Anne's heart attack when the social worker brought one of the coordinators from Crossroads with her to visit Anne and I. She's told me, you know, that what the, the service could provide for us. And, you know, she realised that I'd been doing this caring role on my own for a number of years. So she said, you, you really need it and you really need it now because if you don't do that, it's going to affect your health. And directly that will affect the, the ability to care for Anne. So I listened to what she had to say and she explained the service and she said that these ladies that work for Crossroads would come in and that would allow me time to go out to do nothing, just do whatever I wanted to do. So I decided to look for something else and I joined a choir. It was a social thing and it got me out and uh, I quite, I've always enjoyed singing. I used to sing in school choirs. Not that it was any good, but I enjoy singing. So I joined the choir. Again, Crossroads continued to support Anne and I and gave me the time and the, the feeling that I, I could relax knowing that I can enjoy the choir. I know Anne's been well looked after and that was what worked fine for us. My health would have broken down quicker, sooner, if I hadn't had the three or four hours a week that Crossroads allowed me to have time to myself and get my head together, basically. The support from Crossroads gave me an outlet um, to allow me to do, to find, to try things. Because I think you've got to try something, find out whether you like it or not, and move on if you don't. Um, and that's basically what I've tried, I tried to do with the time that I had um, because of the fact that the ladies from Crossroads were here.